through the Valley of Hinnom. We're going to be passing the city of David and across the valley, as you can see, is the old Yemenite village. Bet Yonatan, Bet Advash, Bet Frumkin. The valley between us and the Yemenite village is called the King's Garden. Twenty families live in this old Yemenite village in the heart of Shiloach, or also known as Silwan. In Hebrew, Kfar Atemanim. So on this uh, Hanukkah, the festival of lights, which is also the festival of the reclamation of Jerusalem, how appropriate that we are touring and the festival that remembers the rededication of Jerusalem. We are rededicating Jerusalem today. Hello. Hello. Well, we're inside Bet Ovadja now, four Jewish families, and who would have believed that here in the middle of what some people call Silwan, yes, there are Jews living here today. It may not be loved by all the neighbors here, but we have people that are lighting Hanukkah candles very shortly. They'll be lighting the second night of Hanukkah. In fact, the family that lives here is the Shemen family who can trace his lineage back to the very, very first Yemenite Jew. He made Aliyah, a uh, Yemenite family, and he can trace his lineage back to the very first Yemenite Jews that came in 1882. It's a phenomenal story. Welcome to the rooftop. For those who don't know, Jewish kids don't yet play in the streets, not in this part of town. So what we do is we find people who will help us to build a playground on our rooftop. So we made this uh, special bridge over to the rooftop. We have to put down specially treated wooden pergola. Unfortunately, the Arabs are throwing stones and every few weeks we're seeing our roof tiles that are being smashed. We have to put st special steel mesh on top of our uh, heaters and solar panels because of the Arab violence. We're on the rooftop of uh, Bet Ovadia, overlooking the city of David, the south wall of the Temple Mount. You can see the visitor center of the city of David today. For the Jews of Yemen who believed in the redemption of the Messiah, everything unfolded here in Jerusalem. They came, they trekked. Initially, there were two families then 15 families, and eventually at its peak, 144 Yemenite Jewish families living right here. Oh, and you left Hanu Khan. No, I was telling you, these are the Maccabees of today. You need to a few twins here. Shalom, Rachem. Shalom, Shalom. These are the Maccabees. Very good. Oh. Oh, you see, when you come to Kfar Temanim, you'll get some Yemenite, Yemenite biscuits. Not really Yemenite, but it doesn't matter. This is a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the country club of the Yemenite village. It's the only one of the buildings here that has a backyard. So because we had some very generous donors from America and from Australia, we managed to build an amazing mini country club where the kids can come, they can play. The whole area looked like that, which was under the stairs. We flattened it out, we cleaned everything out. The kids have got some chickens to play with. They've got a trampoline. They've got swings, they've got an area for the uh, older kids to play upstairs there. And very shortly, we're going to be uh, actually lighting 
Is that we are the indigenous people here, that today the responsibility is not just on the families who are living here, but on the world at large to help the families who are living here. And that help can come in many shapes and forms. It could be maybe by prayers. It could be by, by support in the political field. It could be by helping to build a rooftop playground. It could be by maybe putting security cameras. It could be by renovating a place or even the restoring an old synagogue. There are many, many different ways to be able to help. Well, we've just come into what I would call the heart of the Yemenite village. This is the story. This is the old Yemenite synagogue, Beit Knesset, that only recently has returned to Jewish hands and the story behind this is phenomenal. Adjacent to the Beit Knesset is a single family, also Yemenite happens to be, the Tanani family, the very first family to move in here and I don't believe there is a family. Oh, shalom lachem. Mani shma. A Yemenite dog. Rega, can I say mani? Hello. I think it's a Yemenite dog. Shalom lachem. Chanukah sameach lecha. Ulo aneli. Chanukah sameach. This is the Tanami family and some of their friends playing in Ben Advash. The honey house, the very first family to move into the area. Shira Tanami, shalom Shira. I can see there's another, um, another Maccabee on the way. On the way, yes. Another Maccabee on the way. Anyway, Bashar Tova, we're going to be... As you can see also from here, uh, we've had a few molds of cocktails and stones. So we'll go to the top and have a look at the attacks from the other side. Maybe we'll go to the top and see the attacks better. As you can see, we're going to the rooftop of the honey house and then I'll take all of you into the old synagogue. As you can see here, just look. The attack of stones, the barrage of stones on both Bet Hadvash and also the synagogue is unparalleled. Ah, yeah, fair. Ah, nahon. Jewish life, Jewish life, who would have thought, who would have thought 10, 15 years ago that in the middle of Siwan, the old Yemenite village, that there was going to be Jewish life here and there is a Jewish girl walking around an old Yemenite village is the revival of life, is the sign that it can all happen. This is the, the main story of the Yemenite village. A few years ago, we found out that the original Yemenite synagogue existed. Now, we know that the Arabs destroyed much of what it once was here in the peak when the Yemenite Jews were living here from 1882 to 1938. We're now inside the heart of the old Yemenite village. We've come into a building that is today the original Beit Knesset synagogue of the Yemenite period. But to understand how special this is, I have to take you back to 1882. Yemenite Jews first came, established the first buildings in the area. You can see this is the Beit Knesset, the three domes. Nothing else was here. This was empty land owned by Jews and eventually Yemenite Jews lived here. It was a thriving Yemenite center. Kids came to visit here from schools. There were Yemenite workers, craftsmen. There was a medical center. Kindergartens, 144 Yemenite families. And of course, what would the Yemenite village be without the Mori, 
without the teacher learning Torah and teaching the children itself. Unfortunately, everything was destroyed in the pogroms, the pogroms of 1928-29 and 36-37. And the British were the ones who said in 1938, because they took out the last 35 families that were here that remained after the pogroms. And there's a British promise written from the High Commissioner that the Jewish refugees will be able to return to their homes. A British promise who recognised that this was not Silwan, that this was an old Yemenite village, and that the Jewish refugees could return. So exactly 80 years ago, more or less to the day, there was a Yemenite teacher standing where I am and teaching the Yemenite Jews, little boys, in the Cheder, one of the rooms of part of the synagogue. Today, I'm standing here, part of a Telechonim, knowing that families are back in the neighbourhood, that this one little room is used as a temporary synagogue until we restore the whole building. It's a major job, it's a big job of three to four million dollars to restore to its previous glory. It has to be restored, not just knocked down. The government will help because it's a heritage site, but we need Jews from around the world who understand the importance of bringing Jewish life back to the Maccabee of today. Okay, last stop on the tour. Bet's Rachel. Well, we'll go to one of the families here, maybe just in time for Hanukkah candle lighting. Maybe on the rooftop. Kvarate Manim, Shiloach. Ah, Hektesh Ben Benisti. Shalom Rachel. Welcome to the Rabinovich household. Wohei, wohei, wohei. Hold not enough of him that leak. Soon we're going to be lighting Hanukkah candles here. We've been living here in Kvarte Manim for 11 and a half years, almost 10 of each. We've been here just for nine families by ourselves in the middle, in the middle of the Arab village Silwan in East Jerusalem, just by the city of David. Through these years, we've been facing lots of terror attacks, and we still do. But what happened two years ago, and as you said, Mr. Atarat Kwanim has been working in, the, in those 10 years that we've been living here by ourselves very, very roughly, quietly, to make this place a bigger neighborhood. About two years ago, Atarat Kwanim, suddenly there was a big blessing, just like in Hanukkah in Jerusalem, and Atarat Kwanim started uh, buying new houses here in Kfar Manim, three of each, and from nine families, we've became 20 families, which we are here now. As you can see, our Hanukkiot, we live here, we live here safely. The State of Israel takes full responsibility for us living here at the Yemenite village. It's not simple. We are facing lots of terror attacks. We're facing stones and cocktail molotov thrown on our houses, on the armed, village, uh, armed vehicle with which we're entering our houses. And through that, we believe that Yerushalayim is worth it. We are willing to praise the price of living in East Jerusalem with armed cars, with guards in, if, in each house watching over us. A bit of a complicated life, but beautiful life. Our children, as you can see, <laughs> are happy children. They are a bit stubborn living in such a place, but we have beautiful, fulfilling life in such a place. We want all of you Jews all around the world to join us in the project of building Jerusalem, rebuilding Jerusalem. There was a big light that came to the land of Israel during the Hanukkah days. This light goes on to these days, to our days, here at the Yemenite village. More and more houses in which Hanukkiot are being lit every year gives us light and strength for the whole year. We need more neighbors. We need more Jewish neighborhoods in East Jerusalem. Jerusalem is ours, all of ours, watching us now. I want to thank you for watching us and invite you to come and be partners in this amazing, amazing doing of building Jerusalem again. Thank you. I'm on top of Moshe's lookout, a very special uh, man in America overlooking Mount Zion, the city of David, the Temple Mount, the whole of the old city, Ir David, the Yemenite village. 360 degrees of something very, very special 
and of course the menorah the symbol of light the symbol of victory the symbol of the Jewish people returning to Jerusalem you see the Jewish people have already decided because God has given this land to the Jewish people and Jerusalem is its capital city and there's really nothing that the world can do about it because we're on that special unfolding redemption process that we're seeing and that you saw today on this tour through the Shiloh. Thank you and Shalom from Jerusalem. Thank you.